There's so much value in other names and names that I would probably not trade a year ago or even six months ago, hell, even four months ago. Now I'm trading on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm even trading a lot more small caps because that's what I'm Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a great uh, three-day weekend. Uh, nothing really to uh, report as far as uh, macro change, right? You have uh, the market kind of doing the more what the market does. Uh, the market was very, very strong. Uh, Pre-market futures are surging up 200 points. Had a little bit of profit-taking. Um, you know, NASDAQ composite down a little bit, the, the Dow uh, up a little bit. Again, that's not going to make uh, or break your day. Uh, you know, again, these indexes has kind of been kind of irrelevant for a very, very long time. What, what, what's amazing, what continues to work, and, you know, we, we talked about this kind of in nausea for the last several weeks, are these small cap stocks getting really aggressive option flow. And if you've been kind of watching this broadcast, just for the last, you know, even the last several weeks, you saw uh, OGI go nuts. You saw uh, DNN and DNN is still going nuts. And we had this little one today, uh, this ITP, which which just a, a really amazing move if you really think about this. You had buyers coming in, you had the same common denominator over and over and over again. You have uh, out of the money calls coming in, right? You know, uh, two and a half and four dollar calls coming in all day, like literally all day. They're coming in short-term expiration. They're coming for uh, the March 19 expiration. I said, look, the stock's at $1.18. That's where we got along, you know, $1.18. And the stock right now is $1.48 uh, after hours. Just, just an unbelievable thing. And the most in incredible part about this is I'm not a small cap trader, okay? That, that's not my game. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. And again, here, here you could see, uh, you could see all the re you know, repeat call buyers. And they were coming in small at first. And they started coming in very, very aggressively um, with, with two and a halves and four dollar calls as well. But, you know, the funny thing is I'm, I'm not a small cap trader anymore. I used to be years and years and years ago. The game has changed with all these alert services and all that stuff. But this is what's working right now. Like it's working really, really well. And again, I don't know how long uh, this is going to continue to work. But until it does, anything that's out of the money, that's repeat aggressive call buyers, you know, you almost have to have to take and, 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 and see how long this trend lasts. And until it does, uh, it's a pretty uh, good game. Other than that, uh, good action in the markets. Uh, we'll talk about the pivots in a second. Um, I, I think that the, the, the most important takeaway, what we continue to see, you know, not that the market is not strong. The market is very, very strong. But technology as a whole is really not mirroring how strong the market is, of course. NVIDIA is still acting incredibly well, right? That From that uh, 560 breakout, we talked about that, from that 587 confirmation, acting very, very well, uh, you know, doing doing the run-up ahead of earnings. Zoom uh, continues to, to act very, very well, uh, broke out above that 400, 405 channel. But again, if you look at the rest of the group, and it, and it really does sound like a broken record, but you have to, at, at some point, say, well, wait a minute, if there is at any type of back test. And again, when we talk about back tests, remember, we're still using that 305 number on the queues. And if you look at the queues, you know, they're nowhere near. So the idea that we are set for a back test in the overall market is ridiculous, right? Is absolutely ridiculous. We're still 30 points above this whole macro channel that we have to even entertain before the market. You can talk about technical damage. So we know we're nowhere there. But the point is, well, what, it, what are these stocks going to do? I mean, like, when are they going to finally wake up? I mean, look at Amazon, right? It's been sitting in this channel for an incredibly long time. They came out with earnings, no stock split, no, no any news that will give you any type of catalyst to run, right? Nothing. You had Netflix come out with incredibly good earnings, and all they did was just sell off and now kind of go sideways. Like every single day, I'm sitting here and I say to myself, well, maybe today's is finally going to come out of the channel. Well, maybe tomorrow it's finally going to come out of the channel. Eventually, these stocks do. And again, when you look at Facebook, and we'll talk about Facebook in a second, Facebook was, was another name. At least it finally got out of the channel today and made a little push. But if you look at all the names, 
there's something really, really wrong with technology. We don't know what it is, but the strong ones, when, we, when they do confirm, they do make moves. We talked about Google uh, on the weekend update, had a really aggressive move here, uh, not only took out uh, the 2100 channel, it broke out above the earnings highs of 2115 and put in a high of almost 2150. So that's, there's some names that are acting very, very well. Square is another one that's been doing incredibly well. But when you look at the traditional leaders, the apples of the world, right? The apples of the world just can't get out of its own way. Matter of fact, Apple looks like literally one day away from maybe testing the 50 day moving average. Um, you know, that looks uh, absolutely just just tired, just to, just just not eventful. It feels like nobody wants to even participate in these names. Uh, you look at a Microsoft today, right? They got upgraded today with a three hundred dollar price target. It was a perfect, you know, perfect way to kind of kick off, maybe pull up uh, all these technology names. And the stock did absolutely nothing. So the one thing that this was like, you know, a year ago, I would have turned around and said, well, you know, we got to wait for beta. We have to wait for these things to wake up. But now, you know. And I've been saying this for, for a long, long time. You know, I'm a beta trader. I trade 95% of beta. But again, because they've been so uninteresting, I think that's the best way of saying, and you have to really pick your spots. NVIDIA here, Zoom there, uh, you know, Amazon here, Google there, whatever the case may be, because they've become so uninteresting and so lethargic, there's so much value in other names and names that I would probably not trade a year ago or even six months ago, hell, even four months ago, now I'm trading on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm even trading a lot more small caps because that's where the option flow is. That's where the emotional chasers are really getting aggressive, especially in the morning. But that's where the value is. And at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference what you're trading, right? It's like, like I say this all the time. It's not the money, excuse me, it's not the market that I want. It's the market that I have. And at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, we're going where the value is, right? We're not going to uh, an area of the market that we feel that we need some sort of validation to trade that market. If the money flow is not there, then you can't be there with it. So if you look at today's pivots, very, very aggressive. That's the best way you can say it. Uh, some beta, you could see Facebook, uh, TDOC, but you had a lot of really good moves and stocks like Bongo, for God's sake, right? Bongo that we talked about uh, a little bit over the video. Uh, Tesla had a really nice uh, short today on Tesla. It's not rallying. Folks, again, we talked about this in, in the weekend video. If something does not go up and the longer it starts putting in lower highs, you have to start paying attention to its bottom range. And maybe we're two, three days away. Maybe it starts testing back. Uh, to Friday's channel. Maybe it starts testing below the January 29th channel. It's just common sense. If these things can't go up, right? Well, they must go. So let's talk about today's pivots. Um, Macro-wise, nothing to talk about. RIGL, I was watching this thing uh, above 470. It never got close to the 470 level. But this was kind of the mystery stock I was talking about uh, over the weekend. Uh, buyers came in for um, the March 10 calls, right? Uh, we got to watch this thing. If it starts building over 470, maybe this thing wakes up. So uh, let's talk about the day. Uh, Facebook, just in case it wakes up today, uh, 274 needs to build. And, and, and these days, you know, if you get one beta trade a day, consider that good. I mean, because they're just they're just so out of favor. It's not even funny. So uh, you can see here three times in a row, it got rejected off this 274 level. Today, it finally woke up. Uh, stock traded to 276.60. Uh, does it go higher? You know, maybe it reclaims uh, tomorrow's channel uh, for today's prices, maybe squeeze it out to 280. Again, it'll all see how weak or strong these beta names, but again, but it is it is a little bit frustrating. They, they just can't just put up these uh, magical candles anymore, or at least uh, not the ones from a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Google, uh, very, very strong. We talked about Google. Let me just go one by one so we don't skip anything. Uh, yeah, so bingo. I traded bingo today. Nice move off that $15 move. D bingo needs to reclaim uh, the $15 highs. Here was bingo, right? B-N-G-O. You know, here's the $15 break. You know, nice move here. You know, had a nice little spike traded up as high as uh, 1570s, it still looks higher, right? It still looks like if it starts reclaiming uh, over 16, I think it goes uh, again. Uh, I traded some laser as well. Uh, 3880, 39 needs to build. Um, here was laser, you know, nice little move on laser. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy, but it took out uh, that 39 level and went to like 40 and change before a reversal. Again, not, not every single trade needs to be this magical bullet. Uh, Chewy, 
Uh, 19, I lost track of Chewy today, so I, I don't even know what he did today. 1975, 120. I didn't trade Chewy today. What the hell did Chewy do today? Um, it looks like uh, I traded literally to 120. I got literally to 120. It looks like I never uh, confirmed it and just went straight down. Um, let's see here. Google exploded absolutely when that's, uh, uh, if it opens under 2100, it needs to build that. But the macro area, for all you guys who did miss the 2100, you had every opportunity uh, to look at the 2115 area. Uh, and the stock put up uh, a $40 candle. Really, really good move there on Google. Uh, congratulations for all you guys who caught that. So here's the sneaky 2100. Here's the 2115 uh, and traded to 2145. So big move there as well. Uh, win, we talked about win on the weekend update. Uh, 120 needs to build. Here was win. Right here was win. Took out the 120 and traded all the way up to 123 uh, and a half. Nice move on win. Uh, TDOC 300 needs to build. Not again, not a big move at all. You know, not a big move, but again, not everything needs to be a monster move. So it took out the 300 and it traded right to this channel here of 308. You know, you'd figure at a very, very bare minimum, it would have really started getting aggressive above that channel. But again, eight dollar move on a 300 dollar stock. Uh, it's not the worst thing uh, you can you can do. Uh, all right, Jill, we talked about that. Facebook, we talked about. Nice move on Google. Uh, had a spike here. Had a spike on Bingo. Uh, 2180, still, I still like that measure potential there on Google. Uh, Tesla, I called Tesla, you know, decent trade on Tesla. Um, I thought the stock can get down to the 8, uh, 793 channel. And we talked about why in a second. Uh, take on the way down. So I, I like this pivot here. I, I really like that pivot here, 804, 803 on the five minute support. If it builds below, it can flush. So, so if you look at my comments as the stock is coming down, 793 is the next support. So here was, you know, here was Tesla, right? It took out this whole channel here, right? It took out this whole channel here, took out the seven, uh, 804 channel here. You can see the low of this candle here is 804. It took out the 804 and it traded right to the low of the upper Bollinger Band, excuse me, the lower Bollinger Band of uh, 792.44. For this thing to really get aggressive, it, it really needs to start taking down Friday's channel of uh, 785. But this whole level here, this 129, January 29 lows, I'm telling you folks, you can say what you want, but if they start violating this 129 lows, you know, this, there's a lot of room down. So again, it might not happen today, it might not happen tomorrow, it might not happen, right? But at least, of, again, for you folks who are trading the markets, uh, you know, when you're, if you're a trader, if you're an investor, again, this is not for you. We love Tesla, right? We love Tesla. If you're sensitive, leave the room. We love Tesla. We're talking about from the trading aspect, uh, we're, we're, you know, we caught a good pivot on this thing on Friday to the downside. We caught a good pivot today to the downside again. This is the big number, whether it, it, vi it violates it tomorrow and next week or never does. At least let's watch, continue to watch this bottom range. And especially if they do pull the plug on the market, this is a very, very uh, clean channel. So going into tomorrow, you know, you have to give the bulls uh, continued benefit of the doubt. I think that's the best way uh, of saying it. Uh, there's a lot of SPAC names uh, continue uh, to be really, really good. Like look at this PSAC, right? Really nice looking, you know, SPAC or EV, whatever the hell it is. All these things are all the same to me. It got rejected three times on the top of this channel here. Tomorrow, if this thing can just reclaim this top of the channel here, you have a lot of room up. Uh, so definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, another, you know, kind of SPAC name I like. Uh, look at this BTWN. Had a big move on um, February the 2nd. Today it stopped right at the linear regression line. If it starts reclaiming this area, it might start testing this candle here. Maybe start pushing off that uh, $18 level. So let's keep an eye on that as well. Let me see what else I like here for tomorrow. Um... Let me see what else I like here for tomorrow. This ALDX looks interesting. Let's keep an eye on this ALDX. Nice little range uh, that's developing there as well. And um, I kind of like this Royal Caribbean. I know it's crazy, but I, I kind of like it. First close today uh, over the 50-day moving average. If it could just reclaim this whole channel tomorrow, you know, maybe we could get a we could get a push on these uh, cruise ships. So that's it, guys. Hopefully everybody had a good day. Uh, obviously, ITP out of nowhere. A 30% move. So, hey, they, they continue working until they stop. We'll continue to play them. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Have a, a phenomenal rest of your week. With God's help, we'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys.